Welcome to the QE2. She's the most famous ocean liner in the world. So much history and romance. Back in the day, she was the place to be seen. There was David Bowie, there was Nelson Mandela. Where would that happen in life? Now she has a new home in Dubai. QE2 is older than Dubai itself. And a new life as a luxury hotel. It's scary every day. You don't know what's coming around the corner. Forward, no, 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 back. 700 oysters. If this doesn't get people going, then nothing will. Honestly, that was wow. Chip ahoy. She's a little bit of Britain with a lot of royal heritage. This is a room where I met Her Majesty. It does sort of smack you around the head and say, you're in part of Britain. Roast dinner that tastes like home. Oh. Crumbles, bread and butter pudding, anything that can go with custard. I think it's wonderful it's now in Dubai. It looks enormous. <laughs> Fighting her corner in the world's toughest hotel market. Every second in Dubai, there's something new opening up. Wow. We have to make sure that she makes money. But with a multi-million pound refurb underway. Pressure's certainly on. Time is against us. Uh, these lights, this means a lot to a lot of people. How many days we've got? One more day. That's a lot of pressure, yeah. It's been a mammoth restoration job. <laughs> and a new team at the helm. Get this right! Guys, come on! Get things moving! Someone's head's gonna roll. Oh, Lord. No. Probably my head's gonna roll. Get ready for the madness that's about to happen. Will it be sink or swim for the QE2? The world's most luxurious floating hotel. It's February the height of the tourist season in Dubai. Good morning, welcome aboard the QE2. This is Antia speaking, may I help you? And for the hotel's 283 <laughs> staff, today is going to be an especially busy one. Happy Valentine's Hello, would you like a chocolate? Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, Lord, they're falling off. The ship moved. Oh, thank you very much, Antia. Thank you so much. I'm going to give me flowers. Oh. Mm. Where's mine? Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> Away from the guests, the hotel's $100 million program of renovations is still cracking on. When the ship was brought to Dubai in 2008, she'd been due to be scrapped. Original handrails. This is the original carpet design. CEO Hamza Mustafa was put in charge of transforming her into a modern hotel. So I've had a very difficult task of finding the right balance between recreating her, however, at the same time, not losing the essence and the soul of who she was. Just over two years ago, she was launched as the UAE's only floating hotel. Oops. But only 40% of her is open, while the rest is still being worked on. Because she's so big, and because there are zones that are secluded from the others, we've been able to open sections of her and keep other sections closed off. <laughs> But to keep renovating her and guarantee her long-term future, the QE2 needs to pay her way. General Manager Yonal and his top team have two big events happening on board today that need to go well. Okay, our favourite subject, Valentine's. <laughs> Head of Marketing Katie and Theatre Director Robert are organising an opera gala. Everything with regard to the entertainment is, is, is there. The opera singers fly in on the morning of the event. But even at this late stage, they're okay. still not cool. sold out. No As I mentioned, and no offence, guys, this is Valentine's Day. And it's up to the men to book it. No, if it was the women's job, this would have been booked out months ago, just Absolutely. like Christmas and New Year. I'm so yeah, I imagine that. it's going to be last minute. <laughs> And on top of that, Executive Chef Dino and Food and Beverage Director Grant are putting on a Valentine's brunch for 450. Well, Chef Dino, so what we have so for Valentine brunch? Is it? As many aphrodisiac style products subject to cost and availability. Of course, there's always going to be my oysters, asparagus, um, dessert will be chocolates and hearts. So and that's what different from usual brunch? Different from usual brunch. Okay. Yeah. Friday brunch has become a big earner for Dubai's hotels as it's the place to celebrate and socialise. And they can be pretty lavish affairs, costing up to £150 a head. So the expectations on Dino are huge. But one thing that sets the QE2 apart from other Dubai hotels is her British heritage. Please do come on. It's head of tours Peter's job to take guests on guided trips through her past. 
I want to show you the last ever daily program of the QE2 when we sailed into Dubai. So here we have the night's entertainment, and Des O'Connor was the headliner on that particular occasion. One of only two existing crew members who sailed on the ship back in the day, he knows more than anyone about her romantic past. There is an ambience about the QE2 that defines romanticism, whether you're at sea or not. But yes, I think she's very romantic on many levels. She's seen her fair share of famous lovers, from Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton en route to New York, to Nelson Mandela, who proposed to his third wife, Grassa Michelle, on board the ship in 1998. And I'm pretty sure, in fact, 2151 was Nelson Mandela's suite. I mean, how special was that, to be engaged on the QE2? The ship even boasts a portrait of the newly engaged Princess Elizabeth. You can tell, really, there the affection they have and the romance in that picture and how happy they are. But if the ship is going to end happily ever after in Dubai, it'll take hard graft to make her one of the country's top hotels, as Chef Dino knows only too well. Are you in control time-wise? Yeah? It's scary. It's scary every day. Every day, you don't know what's, what's coming around the corner. By 12 o'clock, Dino and his team have to finish over 100 dishes to wow 450 guests at the Valentine's brunch. Valentine's Day as a whole is very important to us on the QE2. Uh, it's, it's not just a food concept delivery, it's an overall package. It's the, the full experience. It's from the entertainment to obviously the food presentation, the ambience. Basically all the presentations have to be right. They have to come together. Touch wood, we'll, we'll pull this one off. In the pastry kitchen, Head pastry chef Ida and her team are getting stuck in with the sweet treats for the brunch. Valentine's in Dubai is big. It's very big. The Arab world, they are very, very romantic. So everything's going to be pinks and reds and hearts and flowers. Kami chefs Noor and Ahmed are feeling the love. I'm a hopeless romantic. Valentine's is one of my favorite holidays. Especially seeing all the old couples come and celebrate Valentine's here. You see them dancing. It's just nice, you know, people celebrating love. But right now, they've got over 1,000 cakes and puddings still to make, and less than two hours to do it. We've got chocolate mousses, heart-shaped mousses, raspberry mousse, raspberry cakes. This menu has been set a week ago by Chef Ida. Everything has to be done properly. So that's another form of expectations and deadlines. And their deadline's about to get even tighter because head pastry chef Ida has just discovered a crucial delivery hasn't arrived. Uh, we're waiting for cream at the moment. Cream and white chocolate. And it's not just a bit of cream they're waiting for. It's 40 litres of the stuff. It's a really big deal, because if we don't have it, then we can't serve it, so... It needs to be here within the next hour, I would say. Just waiting, waiting around for the cream and waiting until it arrives. It just holds all the production until you get the cream. So if there was no cream, there will be no Valentine's. There's no if it doesn't come. It needs to come, because otherwise we're screwed. Coming up. Is the audience for tonight's gala opera literally going to be blown away? Let me see what the weather is saying. Uh, 18 degrees and windy. It's not looking great. And there's another storm brewing in reception. Look, I just need to know we still have 47 dirty rooms and it's quarter to two. The world's most famous cruise liner, the QE2, has a new home as a floating hotel in Dubai. Her 283 strong international staff have to pull out all the stops to make her a success. How can I assist you? We always got to be on top of our game because every day, every second in Dubai, there's something new opening up, something new happening. Dubai has become a top tourist destination for over half a million Brits a year seeking a bit of winter sun. With temperatures in February reaching 26 degrees, you'd think the one thing you wouldn't have to worry about was the weather.
Tonight's onboard event, an evening of opera under the stars, is under threat. It's due to be held outside on the ship's deck. Yeah. Organisers Robert and Katie are worried there's a storm on the way. It's so annoying because Dubai is, we can count on beautiful weather, <laughs> 364 day. days of the year. Yeah. The one day we want to do something spectacular. It's grey, isn't it? We can't, uh, let me see what the um, weather is saying in Dubai. 18, Look, it's saying... Uh, 18 degrees and windy. <laughs> it's not looking great. Yeah. We need to make a decision. Uh, yeah. I am looking at this at this moment in time. Um, it is such a massive risk if Grant starts laying out his stuff. We run, put electricity out here. Yeah, we are. Yeah. The thing is, we have positioned it as, you know, a night of opera under the stars. I'm sure there'd be more complaints. Yeah. If we did a night of opera under with, the rain and with, stars. With, with rain <laughs> and and um, wind yeah. and it being, you know, you, you have to be sensible. Okay. Because if you're putting glasses out, you're putting out stuff. Then, then we we call it. We call it, and we go we go in the grand lounge. We go in the grand lounge. So tonight's event will be held inside in the historic Grand Lounge. Opera not quite under the stars. Back in the pastry kitchen, cake production for the Valentine's brunch has ground to a halt because the crucial cream delivery hasn't come. But the confectionery gods are finally smiling on Chef Ida. Oh, finally, cream is here. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you so much. Because her missing cream has arrived in the nick of time. Thankfully, it's here now. Darling, can you help with the cream, please? Let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. As Mary Antoinette said, let them eat cake. As well as the sweet treats, Dino's team are hard at it, preparing a feast of other dishes for the Valentine's brunch guests. It looks beautiful. Wow. There are a thousand perfect Yorkshire puddings to make and 700 oysters flown in specially from France to shop. The food might be the star of this Valentine's brunch, but it needs the perfect romantic setting to really show it off. Chef Dino has commissioned kitchen artist Ran Deeper to make themed ice sculptures for the restaurant. We're going to set some roses into uh, ice blocks and then he's going to carve some intricate works on the front. Lots of hearts, lots of cupids, lots of arrows. I just hope the ice sculptures survive the four hour brunch with, with 500 people inside uh, generating heat. But first, they have to get a trolley full of very slippery ice sculptures from the cold stores on shore onto the ship. This thing is getting cracked, so I need to be careful. Now for the trickiest bit, the gangplank. Made it in one piece. More or less. And Chef Dino seems happy. In the next half an hour, this will clear. Yeah. Once it starts defrosting and clears, this will look good. Mm. Head of marketing okay. Katie wants today's brunch guests to post pictures of the ship looking its absolute best. But she doesn't seem entirely impressed with all of Dino's decorations. It looks like a Star Trek funeral. They're going. No. Mm. In definitely not love at first sight. Maybe if you took the ribbons off. Maybe the pearls. Maybe the board. The heart's nice. It looks, you know, like they've gone to a lot of effort, but nah. nah. Chef, these need to go away. We need to take all of this down, yeah? Thank you, Chef. Less is sometimes more. Don't get me wrong, the guys, you know, they've had some materials. They've done a good job with what they've got. They really have. Opinions, everyone has one, but luckily today, mine's the one that counts. Can we remove all of this? Yeah. Honestly, I, I don't like it. You like Star Trek, don't you? No. <laughs> Not funny. You look in ship shape. <laughs> 
You see, it's probably because I'm like this. It's the reason why I don't have a Valentine's Day date today. <laughs> as well as pulling out all the stops for crowd pleasers like the brunch, the hotel still has the day-to-day -day work of managing its 224 rooms and suites. And it looks like they're all fully booked today. Yes, so unfortunately for today, due to the fully booked situation, there is no availability for the check-in. How, how many check-ins have we got? So, oh. <laughs> no, not chickens, darling, check-in. There are never chickens anywhere. How many check Oh, gosh, it's gone, gosh. So we're full, we're, we're full occupants. Assistant manager Anthea is in sole charge of reception today. Well, Valentine's Day is one of our busiest days. We have a lot of check-ins, a lot of check-outs, hundreds, and we have to make sure everyone is there in time. We don't want to put anyone in a bad mood on Valentine's Day. But before the next guests can check in, beds have to be made and rooms have to be cleaned. And housekeeping only has a two-hour window to do it. Housekeeping is under a lot of pressure, especially today being Valentine's Day. There are a lot of setups to be done. Rooms are taking longer for that reason, so they do have a lot of pressure and we do put a lot of pressure on them as well because we have to face the guests. Hi, good afternoon. How are you guys doing today? Checking in? Yes, we are. Oh, okay, great. You can just give us half a minute. One of the guys will be done soon. Okay, they say that front office and reception is like, it's like a stage. Hi. 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 Oh, look at it. <laughs> as soon as you go out, you have to put on the smile. Are you doing anything special for Valentine's Day? I think we're going for the dinner. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, you just go up onto the ship over here and you'll press Q on the elevator. Okay, okay enjoy. But there's only so much smiling you can do if people are waiting to check in and the rooms aren't ready. So Anthea needs to make sure they're all done before the next guests arrive. Hi there, this is Anthea speaking. Um, Look, I just need to know, we still have 47 dirty rooms and it's quarter to two. How are we doing? Well. Okay, and the club rooms? Because a lot of the club rooms have checked out late, so um, we need to get them sorted. Housekeeping attendant Isaac is originally from Ghana. He's been on the ship for almost a year. This is the first time I mean, doing this housekeeping job. So, yeah, we're back home. We used to play football, but now this is just a good job. You get it here. Chelsea is my team. I would like to play one day. He'll need to be on the ball today because there's only 15 minutes to put on clean sheets and make each room spotless. Some guests have also requested an extra Valentine sparkle. This romance package takes an extra 20 minutes, which is adding to the pressure on Anthea. Sanju, please, we need to start getting things ready a bit quicker. Um, it's getting a bit late. There's only so many times I can call housekeeping and tell them. There is an extreme amount of competition in Dubai. Now I think we're standing about 650 hotels in Dubai. That's not counting apartments. And we have to make sure that our ranking is, this is the first thing that people look at before they book. Oh, okay, sure, it's just this way. I'll show you. We're over the hump, I would say. <laughs> With the rooms now spotless, there's a surprise yeah, gift for Oh my word. <laughs> yeah, I'm accepting kisses if you'd like to. Oh, well, you see, I don't want to burst your bubble, but I got one as well. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not special. That's not the only thing getting Anthea hot under the collar. Good afternoon, it's Anthea speaking. Um, look, the lobby is quite warm. It's a little bit hot in the lobby. Can we make it, can we turn on the AC a bit? Thank you. There might be a storm forecast later, but right now, the sun's reappeared. Keeping the QE2 cool in the Dubai heat has proved tricky. When the ship was built in the 1960s, she was designed as an ocean-going liner to cruise the Atlantic and the Med. We deal with 40 degrees temperatures in Dubai. You don't get that temperature in the Atlantic. So the infrastructure within the ship was designed for heating more than cooling. Sorting out the aircon was one of the many things CEO Hamza had to tackle when he took over the ship two years ago. So we've had to re-engineer and change all of the infrastructure so she can remain in Dubai, which has been, I would say, the m hardest challenge, the major challenge we've faced so far. And it's an ongoing battle. 
daily. The spikes are because you've turned the uh, shoes on? Yeah, Thursday and Friday, Saturday, yeah. so that is the, you know, busy days, so we are getting more consumption. We had to triple the air conditioning capacity that the ship originally had, actually quadruple it. We've had to completely redesign the air conditioning network inside the ship to accommodate the harsh summer weather in Dubai. Six decks above, in the ship's main restaurant, things are about to really heat up. Because 450 hungry guests are due to arrive any minute for a lavish Valentine's brunch. And at 80 quid ahead, they're expecting something pretty spectacular. Valentine's guest expectation is slightly higher than normal, but uh, it's, it's, it's done, it's done. The, 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 the trick and the challenge now is to maintain a set standard for the next four hours. Dino's team have put on an array of aphrodisiac foods to get them in the mood. Uh, oyster make your uh, body like a uh, more uh, energetic. <laughs> 700 oysters, 20 kilos of mussels. Um, yeah, if this doesn't get people going, then nothing will. Nothing will. And it looks like one of the chefs has let all this talk of romance go to his head. Who came up with the name Blind Love Dal Makni? Chef Zor. Chef Zor. Dal wait, wait, wait. Spicy love. Spicy love. <laughs> ah, spicy, spicy love. Spicy love. Wow. <laughs> but the hard work's not over yet for Dino's team. Let's keep it clean, let's keep it tidy. Your presentation, Mohammed, beautiful, sexy. Naylin, beautiful, sexy. You've got to keep it looking like this for the entire duration of Valentine's brunch. Do we have enough food for everybody? Yes, yes, yes. yes done? Yes, sir. Good job, let's have a fantastic Valentine's brunch. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's time to get this party started. <laughs> Katie's stripped down display is proving popular. As are Dino's romantic oysters. Chef Ida's Valentine's pastries, complete with cream, are going down like, well, hotcakes. It was really nice, especially my dad loved the seafood, and my favourite part were the desserts. As more guests get stuck in, Dino's perfect food is starting to look less than perfect. Tally up these things, Chef. But with the wine flowing, love is in the air. <laughs> it's my 73rd birthday, so we're having a family, three generation family celebration. You were, what, living in Clyde Bank in Clyde at the time? Bank when the, the QE2 was launched. I think it's wonderful it it's is. Out in Dubai. Oh, it looks enormous. <laughs> Just something you've grown up with, the QE2. So, something you've seen growing up. So, where else would you go? On Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Even though there was no Valentine's card. <laughs> Why would you need a Valentine's card when you're on the QET? In yeah. Dubai, with the man of your dreams. <laughs> Coming up. I need the bus to be here, like this. Katie's having trouble parking. No, 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 back. It's like, so you're at that angle, I said. And will tonight's opera event hit the high notes? Big fuck up tonight. Not a good start. How is this possible? The QE2 has a new permanent home as a floating hotel in Dubai. She's still as British as they come, but she's jostling for space in an already overcrowded hotel market. And that's not the only challenge. Only 40% of this grand old ship is open, while the rest is still being renovated. It's, it's been a, a mammoth restoration job for us. Redeveloping the ship, but at the same time, renovating the ship. We've had to open the ship because we had to generate income so we could sustain her operational costs. To secure her future, the team running her need to keep the pennies rolling in. It's not a charity project, it's just a heritage project. It's a commercial business. The money the QE2 makes is the money the QE2 can spend. So, you know, 
If we don't make money, we can't keep restoring her. It's up to Head of Marketing, Katie, to come up with new ways to pull in the guests. A lot of pressure is on the marketing department to make it work. Her latest brainwave is a new initiative she's hoping will put the hotel on the map. The city sightseeing bus, Dubai, um, it stops off all the iconic destinations. And I had a great idea. I say it's great, might not be. Red double-decker bus, let's bring it on the quayside, put it in front of the QE2 and have a photograph taken. Now all Katie has to do is get both British icons into the perfect spot for the photo. I need the bus to be here, like this. So, yeah, but like this. I want the bus to come underneath the logo, and so it's like facing the ship and under the QE2. Not as easy as it sounds. Reverse back slightly, just slightly. No, 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 back. It's like, so you're at that angle, I said. So go forward, forward, yeah. Stay there a second. Kyle, is that looking good? But there's one thing still spoiling Katie's picture. OK, now I want everyone off. Drivers, stay there, though. With the pesky sightseers out of the way, Katie can finally get her shot. I think that is the shot, right? Beautiful shot. But we'll probably launch this next week because we've got a lot going on right now. So, yeah, I'm happy. Rather more urgent is tonight's opera event. The chairs facing the stage. Yep, straight in the middle. A last minute change of venue means Just banqueting watch. manager Mohammed has less than an hour to transform the historic Grand Lounge into a romantic setting for 200 guests. With Valentine's especially, you only get couples. <laughs> So we, we, it's tables of twos that we need to fit in, and it's, it's much more difficult because, of course, that means more tables. All the furniture that we have is actually the original of what it was. They're very heavy. Back in the days when the ship used to move, so just to make sure that the tables don't actually rock away, they have to make sure that the bases are very heavy. We have to do it very quietly, so that means moving a lot of tables quickly in a very slow kind of manner, which is kind of contradictory, but... That's what we have to do. <laughs> the decision was taken to move the opera inside because bad weather was forecast. True to form, out on deck, the sunshine is now blazing. But Robert, who is organising the event, is philosophical. It's a beautiful day. It's a little bit breezy still. Weather. OK, so it's going to be OK tonight. It's going to go down to about 16 centigrade, something like that which is a little bit chilly. So, was it the right decision? I think it was. Anyway, the decision's made, so you go forward. So all you can do ever is go forward. Make the decision, go forward. He who prevaricates is fa fails, I think, or he who, has he who hesitates is fails. Yeah. <laughs> Classical singers Antonio and Fiona have flown in from the UK especially for tonight's event to serenade the guests with a selection of opera hits. Never been on a, a ship before, let alone on the, the QE2 here in, in Dubai. So it's a fantastic experience for us to come and share a bit of opera for a, an evening for those in love or planning to be in love for their Valentine experience. But it seems they're having some artistic differences about the dry ice. She doesn't like the smoke, as you can see on her face. So she switches the smoke off. <laughs> she doesn't like the smoke or anything. I'm a soprano. You're a soprano. So she, she, I'm a soprano. So she doesn't like the smoke. I've seen high, high notes. I can't sing if I've got yeah. to breathe in dry ice. <laughs> Tonight's event continues a long tradition of live entertainment on board the ship. Back in her sailing days, with 2,000 passengers to keep amused, the QE2 had a theatre and onboard casino. The Grand Lounge was one of her largest entertainment venues. Everything from musicals and magicians to classical concerts and cabaret have been hosted here. The ship also had its own in-house band who played there. Brother and sister, Paul and Natalie's parents, 
first met when they were performing in it. There's our dad there, band leader. We all just to come along here and see where they were. I've been waiting for the QE2 to reopen. I think they'd have both been proud to think that we made the effort to come here and do that. So I think they had a really good time from what I gather. Yeah, <laughs> Cruising the seas and uh, having a, an absolute ball, literally. Mum and Dad are no, unfortunately no longer here. Uh, Mum passed away when she was very young at 48 and Dad seven years ago when he was 85. So they've never had a chance to come back here. So that's re another reason that we're here, really, yeah. to relive it, because he spoke so much of it, about it. And even when he was really poorly in the end, the doctor said to him, if, if there anything you want to know or anything you'd like to do? And he said, yeah, can I go on the QE2? Bless him. I think that's the main reason we're here, isn't it? Yeah. If you look at the, the flagpole there. Yeah. That's the flagpole, so. Oh, yeah. It was here. It was. It was right here. That's amazing. I think that's it. There. Okay, so do you want okay. to... Oh, it's really emotional, it really is. I can't tell you, it's just strange, but lovely, absolutely lovely, and makes me always feel closer, I don't know, and everything, you know. She's here, she's here. Alongside the big live music venues where Paul and Natalie's parents played, the ship has cosier spots to while away the voyage. Tucked away on quarter deck is her very own authentic British pub, the Golden Lion. So here we are then in the Golden Lion pub, and we are the oldest pub in Dubai, hashtag. It was thought, it's a British ship, shall we have a British pub? Would it work? They didn't know, frankly, but it worked very well indeed. And if you ever remember the entertainer Jim Bowen, if you do, I don't know, but if you did, we'd had many a duet in here for karaoke, Bobby Davro the same. It's continued to prove popular in her new Dubai home, but if there's one thing every good British pub needs, yeah. it's a traditional pub quiz. Here's the sales team. Are you ready for the quiz tomorrow? Oh, wait. The hotel staff teams are about to go head-to-head uh -huh. -head in the new Golden Lion pub quiz. Are you coming to the quiz tomorrow? Promise? Promise. Your sales? You should know loads about the QET. Competition's ah. already brewing. Yeah. Here's Lillian. Are you ready for the quiz tomorrow? Yes, I am. Are you going to be... Who do you think is going to win? I am going to rock it. HR. We don't let her win. It's consequences. No, we're just good at this. Come on. See, I think I'd win. You think you'd win? Yeah, because I'm also helping with questions. <laughs> and I'm a, <laughs> bad I'm a bad cheat as well. <laughs> <laughs> but before they can pit their wits against each other, they've got a more pressing event to deal with. Because the guests are beginning to arrive for tonight's Valentine's Opera Gala. There's just time for food and beverage director Grant to do some last minute checks. They haven't double checked their tables. Uh, the legs are not straight at the bottom. Check table number 23 for me quickly. And checked means checked right now, huh? Because you're expecting guests soon. Look, uh, an eye for detail is always key in our industry. I mean, that's what sets your regular hotels apart from your really high-end hotels. And it looks like the change of venue hasn't put anyone off. It's full. We can't fit any more in. So, yeah, absolutely delighted with the numbers. I think um, we couldn't fit any more in. As the singers begin, the team can serve the starters. Tonight is all about precision timing, but Grant's noticed a problem. Oh. Chef, 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 chef. Don't send anything yet, please. Okay, just so. Having been kept chilled against the Dubai heat, the starters need time to settle to room temperature. Only some of them haven't. How is this possible? Grant's precise timings are going out the window. I don't have 15 minutes. I can't delay this whole performance by 15 minutes now. Big fuck up tonight, to be honest with you. Yeah, standards are high on the QE2, so I'm not, uh, I'm not comfortable sending out the food now that we have. Coming up, things are getting out of hand for Grant. I have a nice table number. Quickly, quickly, run, 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 run. And underhand in the back of the QE2 brains. No, what's happened? Is my phone. <laughs>
The most famous ocean liner in the world, the QE2, is a bastion of all things British. And she's soon to have her very own pub quiz in the onboard Golden Lion pub. The hotel staff teams are daggers drawn. Sales and marketing. It's quiz an night. S&M. Do you think we're going to win? Yeah. See, HR Absolutely. think they're going to win. I do trivia for fun, Lillian. This is true. She is it's competitive. Mm. The QE2 will always be British. She will always maintain that very Britishness about her. We really channel that. We nourish it. So here's the audience now. I'm in the middle, and we are now reading the questions out, you see. So what... Oh, there we are. Good start. What is a cartophilist? Head of Tours Peter has the starring role of Quizmaster. And that would be a collector of cigarette cards. Well, I didn't know that at all. <laughs> it may sound a bit corny, but it, again, evokes many memories because that was my job in those days. We used to do the quizzes every morning. So alienphobia is a fear of garlic. Is that true or is it false? Actually, it's true. Some people do fear garlic. Well, I didn't know that. Back at the opera, not all the drama is on stage. Starter service has been halted, while food and beverage director Grant makes sure every plate is correct. I'll be checking most of the plates before they go out now uh, to ensure that it's the right quality that I want and that our guests want. Most of the guests are enjoying the music, blissfully unaware of the delay. Yep. Scott has just gone out. We're about 20 minutes behind service. We gave it enough time to settle, uh, which it needed, um, and it went out and nothing's come back, so, so far so good. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it's not Grant's night. He's had an emergency call from one of the restaurants on the lower deck. Rakesh, quickly double time downstairs to pavilion, please. Pavilion, very badly hit now, OK? Watch your step. We have allocated uh, a lot of the manning to the Valentine's event, and uh, we've taken some stuff from the actual restaurant. So they're struggling a lot now with the amount of guests that have come through. Good evening, guys. How are you? A large group of unexpected guests have just walked in wanting food. Keeping them waiting would mean a bad review. Jeff, how many tables on the pass? We are right now one, two, three, four, five. Five tables we have. You got a new order on the pass, Chef? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing for it but to pitch in. Have a nice table number. Quickly, 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 quickly. Run, 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 run. I'll get the bread, have a nice. I'll get the bread. You get your passes. Six pieces? Yeah. Yes. Table six. Chef, four minutes. Table number six, pick up. And there's no let up upstairs at the opera. To be honest with you, I'm not the sort of guy who's going to sit down and be in an office all day. I really can't handle that. <laughs> um, I need to be moving, I need to be running. Um, and the intensity of being on the floor and in the kitchen, it's nothing better, nothing better. What a rush. Knife and a fork, quickly please, knife and a fork. Thanks, The delay with the starters has had a knock on effect on the main course. Alright, two more chicken please. Yeah. Right here. So once again, Grant has to roll up his sleeves. Two chicken. Can I pick up? Yes. Alright, 76. Cool. Alright, extra bread. Two more chicken please. Go, go, go. Two chicken. Chicken, chicken. Well the event tonight went uh, exceptionally well. Uh, we had a bit of a rocky start as you as you know earlier. But uh, the staff really pulled together afterwards and the main course went out superbly well. Uh, with absolutely no challenges. Uh, actually, within 10 minutes, the main course was out. But have tonight's guests been swept off their feet? Uh, well, it was a surprise for Valentine's Day. So, uh, but do you like the surprise? I love it. Yeah? Basically, I'm obsessed with the Queen, tea and crumpets, and Titanic. <laughs> That's why I chose it. <laughs> this is the perfect mix of my favorite things. I think the opera singers have blown them away. It's a very romantic evening. They, everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. My wife has turned up um, and uh, brought me her last Rolo. So romance is in the air. 
the people absolutely loved it. Honestly, a brilliant, brilliant into the very, very good day. But there's one more challenge for the hotel staff, the pub quiz. Chef Dino's been cooking up a storm all day, but he's not finished yet. It's crispy, light and everything. Okay. Fish nicely seasoned. Yeah? Okay. okay. So tonight we've got the staff in and we're going to give them a little, a little uh, taster platter. Some traditional British food, some scotch egg, a little bit of cottage pie, fish and chips. Actually, they're the worst people to cook for. They're the, they're the ones that will moan the most. Oh, it wasn't hot. Oh, it wasn't crispy. Testing, testing. Pens at the ready. QE2. It's about to start. So, everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the quiz on the QE2 in the, in the uh, Golden Lion. First question is, how many world cruises did QE2 do? Yeah, write the answers down, please. Don't call out. What year was the Royal Voyage and what was the purpose of it? Going back on board after all those years away, I was more than pleasantly surprised and I felt overjoyed when I found that everybody had that love for her. Everything they do, they do for the, for the love and the future of this ship, and that is lovely. What is a baby oyster called? <laughs> I was born in 66, so I've grown up with the QE2 in existence. So it, it's, it's exciting, it's intriguing, you don't know what's around every corner. Long may she sail. In which Australian TV soap did Danny Minogue star? star? I'm sure that in 50 years time, I'd like to look back and think, I was part of this living history. No, of course I haven't used my phone. <laughs> There's a little bit of discrepancy there. It's not just a ship, she's got a soul and it's only when you step on board, you realise how truly unique it is. The scores are in, but who will claim the QE2 quiz crown? So let's go around here and how did we do? What did we get? We're checking here. We won, basically. We won. Yes. Three <laughs> wrongs. So how many, what's the total? 10, 20. 27. 27. Boom. Boom. Oh, Katie's oh, 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 got his new bag. Well, I like that. That's class. The square root of 100. How about down here? 11. What did you get? 29. We won this. No. Fucking did it. Picked at the coast by Dino Grant and general manager Yanar. Next time. Get this right. Tempest Frey as the ship's best restaurant goes for launch. This one is a big deal for them. Cracks appear in the refurb. They're going to need to replace it. OMG. And things get ugly. Someone's head's going to roll. When an onboard fashion shoot gets stuck. Can't get this bloody door open.